and welcome everyone to Silver Asset of the Day for the 22nd of January 2021, presented by myself, Phil Carr, at the Gold and Silver Club. And really following on from Gold Asset of the Day, we have seen this slingshot move higher in both Gold and Silver over the course of this week. As we discussed with you on the Week Ahead Commodity Report and Asset of the Day, we were expecting this acceleration to the upside later on the week off the back of Janet Yellen essentially becoming Treasury Secretary and also Wednesday's inauguration of Joe Biden where we now know we have trillions of stimulus coming. And with that, we have seen a breakout on gold, a breakout on silver. In fact, gold from the lows that it hit earlier on in the week at $1,803 per ounce had that breakout all the way up to $874 per ounce. It's been a 700 point move or $70 move there for gold. In fact, that banked us 1,250 points of profit over six trades. As we've been mentioning to you, we took the opportunity at the beginning of this week on that dip lower on Monday to stack another position. And last week, we also built an additional five positions on gold. All of those trades have been protected. We've taken partial profit off the table, again, banking 1,250 points profit. So essentially for every one lot that you would trade, that would be $12,500 profit. But every 10 lots that you would trade, that's $125,000 of profit. So it's been a nice start to the week into the Joe Biden administration, giving us this nice bump higher on the precious metals. But as always, you do need to be nimble. You need to be in and out of the markets regularly, banking those profits on a constant basis. As we go into next week, a couple of major news items you should be aware of. Number one is that you have contract settlement next week on Wednesday. So in the lead up to that, you will tend to get traders coming out of positions on gold, on silver, and then coming into the next futures contracts. You can see a bit of a liquidation event going into next week. And then we have Wednesday's FOMC statement as well. So again, traders will be repositioning for that. We've had a really solid move here for gold over the last few days. As many of you know, when the sentiment has been getting really negative here, we've taken the opportunity to keep stacking in our positions. Now we're in a great spot here where all of those trades have moved really nicely into profit. They're fully protected. If gold, silver continue to go up from here, that would be ideal. But if they do pull back, we'll simply look at these opportunities as pullbacks, as buy opportunities, as long as you know the right levels to get in, the key liquidity zones and knowing when to bank is very important as well. It's just as important to know when to exit trades, when to close, when to bank, as when to actually get into your positions. If not more important, actually making sure that you're locking in those profits regularly. Now, with silver price right now, it is sitting around 26 US dollars per ounce. As we mentioned to you previously, we've built up four positions on silver between 22 to 24 dollars per ounce. There was an opportunity for you, in fact, at the beginning of the week, if you weren't stacked heavy enough in those positions to add on the dip where silver prices broke down to $24 per ounce quite quickly on the Monday. Subsequently, we're sitting at $26 per ounce over a 6% move to the upside over this week so far. So it's been a solid move here for the precious metals. Much of this we anticipated with you, we discussed with you on the week ahead commodity report. Use these sell-offs at the beginning of the week where the sentiment is really negative, where most technical traders, analysts out there getting really bearish on the metals, use that to scoop up the metals at low prices and then you're gifted with, of course, the narratives that we've seen over Tuesday and Wednesday and Joe Biden inauguration. We've just seen precious metals fly to the upside. It's that normal cycle, right, of many retail traders, many technical traders just rinse and repeat. They end up panic selling at the lows. Then they end up FOMOing in later on after the move has already happened, right? It happens time and time again. This is really the point with commodities trading is that it is a zero sum game. So there needs to be someone on the other side of the trade. So what we've seen over this week is many traders being wrong footed on gold, on silver, panic selling out at the beginning of the week. And as they're panicking out, we're basically getting filled into their position. So as they're selling, we're buying, and then we have this nice slingshot move higher, which is why you do want to be trading the same way that the hedge funds, the banks, the money managers, and also the market makers do in the market, as opposed to following outdated technical analysis. If you do find that you're often getting chopped up or you keep FOMOing in too high only to see gold or silver, then slam in the opposite direction, or you keep panic selling out just as the price is about to boom to the upside, it's very likely that you are using outdated technical indicators in the market. So of course, with that, 
If you would like to learn the research-driven approach to the market, where you will get an edge, you'll be utilizing our data, market intelligence, alongside our research awareness of capital flows, cycles in the market, daily cycles, weekly cycles, monthly cycles, the quarterly cycles, marry that up too with seasonality, intermarket correlations, and of course, macroeconomics, and all of our data, which will help you massively to get an edge. So if you would like to join a community of successful traders, join our professional mentorship program, there is an opportunity for you to do so. Just click in the link below today's report in order to make an application to become a member of the Gold and Silver Club.